after World War II was a boom town. Many in the military bases that surrounded it had decided to stay. They saw a vital community in a wilderness of opportunity, so they were sending for their families. The small town scrambled to find housing for its new residents who were in a hurry to build not just buildings, but a real city, one that had art, music, and theater. They weren't willing to trade cultural experiences for wilderness. They wanted them both for themselves and their children. By 1950, the Anchorage Little Theater, the organization that fostered all the cultural activities in town, had spun off a new group wanting to bring concerts to Anchorage. It called itself the Anchorage Concert Association. I knew when I came to Anchorage, when I was here, I knew this is where I belonged. They needed me, and I had I, I loved doing what they needed me for. It was mostly music. We didn't have really a terrific auditorium in those days, but it was the high school auditorium. And later it was named the Sidney Lawrence Auditorium. Of course, it was always full because it was such a success. Now the big performing arts center is on the location where this school was. Maxime Shapiro, a pianist who had performed in Anchorage in the 1940s, had fallen in love with Alaska and took advantage of a new concert association. He offered to find other artists to travel north for a series of concerts each year. So communities all over Alaska and some in Canada formed their own concert associations to take care of the artists and present what would be called the Alaska Music Trails. Why did he do it? because he was so excited about the hospitality. Of course, I always had some moose meat. Maxim was very concise about seeing the children got to the concerts. That was one thing he says, you have to promise the children, there will be children's concerts. And he said they should learn to pay. They need to learn that it costs money to see and hear the fine things in the world. Performances for children, as well as special presentations in the schools, continue to be a major focus of the Concert Association. Maxime ran the music trails for eight years. As audiences increased, more concerts were added. When he died suddenly in 1958, his wife Jane took over. With a lot of help from Bob Wilkins, president of the Concert Association, they arranged the concerts. Soon, Bob was managing the tours. I don't know how we ever did without Bob Wilkins. Well, it's provided me with a great hobby and avocation for uh, 40 years. Even then, Anchorage was attracting the best performers in the world. Being on the polar route and having so many foreign airlines flying through here, we were able to get uh, some groups from Europe that uh, otherwise would not have been available to us. Soon, Alaska had grown beyond the music trails. The state was changing, and so was the Concert Association. The old Sidney Lawrence Auditorium had now been replaced by the new auditorium at West High. Well, I came up in 1975, and I thought, well, I'm now in the wilderness. I can forget about seeing wonder wonderful performing arts events. Was I surprised? All the art scene that was here was really community volunteer based. Oh, we had to have volunteers. Oh, I never got a cent for anything. Mom, is, for as long as I can remember, has always been a member of, of the association. We also took care of putting the season ticket bundles together at home. I was a conscripted volunteer. <laughs> Today, volunteers number over 100 and are known as the Anchorage Concert Associates. 
There's a half a century of memories, a chuckle here and a note of wonder there at the greats who came to Anchorage. There's a group called the Colorado String Quartet. And in the middle of the second movement, all of a sudden, the stage that they're on, which is hydraulic, starts to go down with them on it. Down, down, and they're playing. And they're wondering, what's going on? I'm sinking away. And they disappeared. We call the amazing disappearing string quartet. And then we had the extreme good fortune in 1958 to uh, sort of reach up into the sky and bring down the New York Philharmonic with Leonard Bernstein conducting. My junior year, Jose Greco was here, and that was a fabulous performance. That was just really, really incredible. I cut school at service to go over to East to see the, um, to see the performance, and the high school kids just, just went wild. The appearance of the National Symphony here under the directorship of Rostropovich, probably the most sensational musical event that's taken place in this theater uh, since it was built. By this time, the Anchorage Concert Association had made its final move to the Alaska Center for the Performing Arts, one of the finest arts facilities in the country. People come to Alaska and they expect great mountains, snow, glaciers, whales, moose, and we have all of that. But people often find, like, wow, we have this amazing performing arts center and this fabulous performances going on there. I didn't expect that. audience this is marvelous it's wonderful and warm and 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 uh, it's a very it's a very educated audience it I mean I, I'm sure that that's in part what they bring themselves to their experience but also they've clearly been coming to high quality things at shows Anchorage's artists also benefit from collaborations with organizations such as the Anchorage Symphony and the Alaska Dance Theater when they get to perform with professional dancers in the enormously popular Nutcracker every year. It's really, really fun. I think it can get hard, but I think that my work's paid off when I get into like the Nutcracker and stuff. If the Anchorage Concert Association can get the artists to Anchorage, People throughout Alaska can then afford to bring artists to their communities. In those small communities, those performances are even more special than they are here. I remember in Unalakleet, uh, they basically shut the town down. All the stores closed, all the schools closed. The town just stopped what it was doing and went to the performance. And when artists can only perform in Anchorage, subscribers from Barrow to Ketchikan hop on a plane. What will they see this year? The Anchorage Concert Association would like to fill your year with excitement, wonder, and laughter. From Bach to ballet to Broadway, we've got the shows that you'll want to see. Broadway comes to Anchorage with Andrew Lloyd Webber's smash hit, The Phantom of the Opera. Discover dance fans will see the Joffrey's Rock Ballet billboards with music by Prince. Share the music. Share the fun. The Anchorage Concert Association reflects an exciting world, and all of Alaska can be part of it. It takes a great deal to run an organization like the Anchorage Concert Association. Uh, many people would believe that uh, the total cost of the organization are recovered by the purchase price of the, the seat that they, that they reserve. That's, that's simply not the case. Ticket sales cover about two-thirds of the cost of bringing these artists here and having them perform for the public, perform for the schools and the kids. But the remaining one-third we have to seek out from contributions takes companies, large companies like BP Exploration, and takes smaller companies who will provide some area of either in-kind support or financial support. The business of the arts is fairly large. In the case of the Concert Association, our annual budget is approaching three million dollars a year. That money is used not only to hire the artists, but it goes to hire the stagehands that are behind the scenes. It, it goes to help pay for the ticket services provided by our ticket outlets. It provides enormous employment in this community. I have to tell people everywhere, as I do here at home, that there's now really a decreasing ability 
of us to find federal assistance to help uh, in terms of performing arts, arts throughout the country. Once upon a time, not more than 10 years ago, the Concert Association had about one quarter of its budget funded by the National Endowment for the Arts, and the State Arts Council, and the local Municipal Arts Commission. That's down to less than 5% now and going down. The Performing Arts Center and the Anchorage Concert Association need support. I, I would urge everyone who's watching this program to give full support to the Anchorage Concert Association. In 1950, when the community formed the Anchorage Concert Association, they made a commitment to future generations. They knew that cities were not just concrete and wood. Growing into a great city in this wildly beautiful, awe-inspiring land requires great performances of artistic excellence that encourage the imagination, nurture creativity, and celebrate the human spirit. Well, it's a beautiful place, so I'll be back for sure. The word that Leontine Price used when she walked off the stage after the first part of her program was delicious. They've done a lot of great shows, and I know it because I've been in a few, and every year it gets better. People come up to me on the street who, who know that I'm active, and they say, you know, wow, that was an incredible performance, or what a great concert that was, and um, it just really makes you feel good to be able to, to be a part of that.